Coming up on Bear News, UNC's Board of Trustees responds to student demands. We have the full story coming up. A campus facelift is causing parking chaos. Stay tuned to find out more. We've got all that and more on this episode of Bear News. Don't go anywhere. Trump presidency and his administration is battling in the, in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals over his immigration limitation order. On January 27th, Trump issued an executive order banning travelers from seven majority Muslim countries, Iraq, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen, from entering the U.S. for 90 days. The Ninth Circuit of Appeals in San Francisco heard the arguments on Tuesday about whether a federal judge had the legal grounds to suspend Trump's ban but as of press time, the court hadn't issued a ruling. During the appeal, three judges heard arguments from the Department of Justice and Washington state attorneys, but Trump suggested to law enforcement chiefs on Wednesday that politics and not legal reasoning led the courts to suspend his executive order. He also warned that the loss of the travel restriction com compromises national security. And I don't ever want to call a court biased, so I won't call it biased. And we haven't had a decision yet. But courts seem to be so political, and it would be so great for our justice system if they would be able to read a statement and do what's right. The U.S. attorney acknowledged that the reason the case moved so fast was to give the government enough time to provide all evidence um, to support Trump's order. He says that the Washington federal judge's ruling last week to hold the executive order was over, overboard and overrode presidential authority. Solicitor General Noah Purcell told the appeals court the Trump administration wants to, to reinstate the ban without judicial review. And Homeland and Secretary, Homeland Secretary John Kelly defended, defended it against Democratic critics who called it a ban on Muslims saying that terror risk, not religion, was the key factor in the president's order. He also suggested that the travel ban should be delayed just a bit because of the lack of communication with Congress. The order sparked protests and chaos across the nation and in overseas airports. The Ninth Circuit is expected to decide whether a lower court judge acted properly in halting enforcement of the president's order temporarily. That decision is widely expected this week. The UNC Board of Trustees held a public meeting on Wednesday in response to the student demands received last year. Trustee Chair read a statement seeking to ensure students that the board supports UNC's mission, vision, and values that state that the university will provide services that support equal learning and environment opportunities for all students. While students demand the board fire UNC President Kay Norton, the trustees reiterated their satisfaction with Norton's overall performance and she will continue in her job. The board refused to increase funding for undocumented students by 50% before 2019, saying UNC provides financial aid to them consistent with the way financial aid is awarded to all other students. They also made policy changes to protect the UNC community from harassment and discrimination by including gender identity and gender expression as protected classes. We firmly believe that engagement and dialogue are essential to building a strong university community. As you can see, a lot of good work is being done at UNC. The board encourages every, everyone's participation in these efforts to make UNC an even better place. The board held the meeting to ensure that they heard all members of the UNC community and considered all the demands. A warm start to the week has quickly turned cold. How are Greeley's current conditions, Abigail? 
It's quite cloudy and warm outside today. As you can tell from this picture, we've got a few clouds that are mainly only giving us the purpose of blocking the incoming sun, which has definitely served to heat us up today. As you look towards the mountains, you can see a clear spot in the clouds, and the mountains are seeing those clear skies, but here on the plains, we are seeing some cloudy skies. Currently, it's 65 degrees, with humidity around 27% and with winds out of the southwest at 10 miles an hour. Now you may be wondering, 65 degrees, does that seem kind of hot for February? And it, the answer is, it kind of is. Here's a map of the normal temperature that we normally see here in Colorado compared to the temperature that we've been seeing in the past week. Here in Weld County, we're seeing temperatures around zero to four degrees Fahrenheit higher than what we usually see for this time of year. In the mountains, that's even higher at around 12 to even 20 degrees Fahrenheit above average. And will this trend continue? We'll have that and more coming up. As the semester continues, people are still having issues with learning Canvas. Reporter Stephen Rice gives us a better understanding of how to use it. One of the most important things for college students is to check their grades. I'm about to give you a sneak peek on how to do that on Canvas. Want to view feedback from your instructor? Be sure to check out your grades page within the course. On the left-hand course navigation feed, you will see grades. As you can see, this student has a grade to be viewed. This is indicated with a 1. Then click on the grade and the page will appear with the assignment that has been graded. You can view your score and see comments posted about your score from the instructor. I prefer to click right on the assignment link to see the submission details. You can view your submission and even comment and see ratings from your instructor. This can be done within text or even files. Don't forget to hit save when doing so. Reporting from the University of Northern Colorado, I'm Stephen Rice, Fair News 98. Still have more questions about the site? Go to the UNC homepage and search Canvas. Coming up next, after the break, Abigail has your full weather forecast. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get Come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. I'm meteorologist Abigail Stewart. Taking a look at our current satellite, we see not much over Colorado. Mostly those clouds are staying north of us, but the clouds that are here really aren't giving us much in the way of precipitation. Mainly, they're just giving us cloud cover. Here's the current radar, and as I said earlier, these clouds, nothing really in the way of precipitation, even over the entire state of Colorado. We've got a stationary front kind of near the front range plains of the state and a low pressure system right around the Colorado-Wyoming border. But to see all the rainy weather and kind of cool weather, you have to follow that front up and over to the western United States, where they're seeing a ton of rain and a ton of flooding currently. Here's the radar from California, Washington, and Oregon right now. As you can see, northern California is getting a ton of rain, and with some smaller storms moving up and north of California. Here are the current watches and warnings in California, Washington, and Oregon. And as you can tell, most of the coast is dominated by all of these flood watches and warnings from all of these storms that they've been seeing from these, this dangerous flooding. Here in the central United States, we really aren't seeing much even in the way of storms. As we move to the eastern United States, you can see a few snowstorms up east, but really the main story is this flooding that we've been seeing on the west coast. Here's a photo sent to us from Catherine in Portland, Oregon. And as you can tell, it is quite gloomy there. 
with a lot of rain, as we saw earlier from the radar and the flood watches and warnings. Our highest precip today comes to us from Northern California, where in Humboldt County, they saw 7.95 inches of precipitation just within 24 hours. Surrounding stations saw around four or five inches of precipitation, which is still a lot considering this was only 24 hours worth of rain, and this doesn't account for what's falling right now. Here's a map of what's normal for the, the Western United States compared to what they've been seeing the past week. As you can tell, most of the states where we did see all these watches and warnings are sitting around 200 to even 800 percent of normal precipitation, thus leading to a lot of those flood watches and warnings and dangerous conditions over there. Bring us back to Greeley. We see 8 a.m. tomorrow, we're going to see temperatures around 40 degrees, and finally warming up to 56 degrees at 10 a.m. And that's been our high the last couple of days, so you can bet that it's definitely going to be a lot warmer tomorrow than we've seen the past week. Winds are going to stay around 10 miles an hour for the morning. Looking at our five-day weather forecast, tomorrow, like I said, going to be warm, 72 degrees, with partly cloudy skies, Finally, a cool down Saturday and Sunday with 56 for the high for Saturday, 57 for Sunday, and with mostly cloudy skies on Saturday, partly cloudy on Sunday, and mid to upper 50s for Monday and Tuesday with clear skies. That's all for weather. Back to you. Kids will spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. You might notice a few more cars in the parking lots on West Campus right now. The construction around the UC this semester is a burden for both students and faculty. The green fence surrounding the small parking lot south of the UC caused big changes for students and staff planning to park and walk around campus. The blockage is because of the Campus Commons, UNC's new building slated to open in spring of 2018. The Campus Commons have been in the works for more than a year now, and you can expect to walk around the green fences for several months as the construction progresses slowly. You'll see a lot more construction activity throughout the summer. So, unless you're taking a summer class on campus, the only issues you might be running into are change routes around the UC and a few less parking spaces. If you usually park in the lot immediately south of the UC, well, take heart, the parking lot directly to the south of that one is still open. Several offices and service, services currently spread across campus will move to the Commons, making it a one-stop shop for a lot of university services. We'll keep you posted on Campus Commons prog progress throughout the semester. Are you interested in representing and serving the student body? Consider running for Student Senate. You can run for one of the 22 elected, elected positions available for the 2017-2018 academic year. Election Commissioner and Student Senate Parliamentarian Tammy Ortiz explains the impact of the governing body. Well, we're working for the students. We're giving voice to the students, making sure the students are represented. And Because um, a lot of times at college campuses or even anywhere, um, that student voice isn't always heard, so we make sure that they have a voice. Still interested in running? Here's what you will need to do. Pick up an election packet at the Student Senate office or, in our, or on the UNC website. You must be enrolled in 12 credits and have at least a 2.5 grade point average. Fill out the general application and collect two faculty signatures and 50 student signatures. Turn all this in to the Student Senate office by February 24th and you're good to go. Elections are April 4th, 5th, and 6th. You can go vote on the computers available at the University Center or at home via your Ursa account. It's almost Valentine's Day. You know what you're supposed to do on that special day, but do you know why? Bear News reporter Stephen Rice tells us the history of how this love holiday came about. What has become one of the most popular holidays is thanks to a patron saint. The history of Valentine's Day and the story of its patron saint is shrouded in mystery. We do know that February has long been celebrated as a month of romance and that St. Valentine's Day, as we know it today, contains vestiges of both Christian and ancient Roman tradition. But who was St. Valentine, and how did he become associated with this ancient rite? Well, the Catholic Church recognizes at least three different saints named Valentine or Valentinus, all of whom were martyred. 
One legend contends that Valentine was a priest who served during the 3rd century in Rome, when Emperor Claudius II decided that single men made better soldiers than those with wives and families, he decided to outlaw marriage for young men. Valentine, realizing the injustice of the decree, defied Claudius and continued to perform marriages for young lovers in secret. When Valentine's actions were discovered, Claudius ordered that he be put to death. Other stories suggest that Valentine may have been killed for attempting to help Christians escape harsh Roman prisons, where they were often beaten and tortured. According to one legend, an imprisoned Valentine actually sent the first Valentine greeting himself after he fell in love with a young girl, possibly his jailer's daughter, who visited him during his confinement. Before his death, it is alleged that he wrote her a letter signed, From Your Valentine, an expression that is still in use today. Although the truth behind the Valentine legends is murky, the stories all emphasize his appeal as a sympathetic, heroic, and most importantly, romantic figure. So as you go out to buy that big bear, candy heart, or flowers for that special someone, remember St. Valentine, because that hopeless romantic is the reason we celebrate Valentine's Day. I know that if I was in a relationship, my significant other would be getting some flowers the color of this shirt. Reporting from the Bear News Studio, I'm Stephen Rice, Bear News 98. February is a busy month when celebrating holidays and events. For instance, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. On the other hand, Black History, Heart Health, and Dental Health are celebrated all month long. Greek Life and Athletics participate in giving awareness to these topics. For more, for more information on how to bring awareness with any of these events, visit the UNCO calendar. And this update to our top story. Just a few minutes ago, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals issued its ruling upholding the lower court's temporary restraining order on the administration's travel ban. So the Seattle, Seattle judges nationwide ruling prohibiting enforcement of the ban against immigrants from seven countries will remain in effect, at least for now. And that's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us this evening. And a big thank you to Peak Stucco and Stone for their help with our brand new set. We'll be back next week. Until then, stay up to date on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Bear News 98. Be sure to like us. Have a great week.